From KUNC and the NPR Network, this is In the NOCO, a daily slice of Northern Colorado news and happenings. It's Wednesday, December 13th. I'm Erin O'Toole. We tend to trust local and state leaders more than federal lawmakers, at least according to recent polls. But transparency is a problem at virtually all levels of government. For the last year, KUNC investigative reporter Scott Franz has been uncovering an example of this at the Colorado State House. His reporting highlighted how Democratic lawmakers have been using a secret voting system to help them decide which bills to consider. Those lawmakers now face a lawsuit. The first hearing in that case happened last week. He joins us now to explain the twists and turns of it all and what's next. Scott, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, my pleasure, Erin. Now, you broke this story last year, and your reporting has captured a lot of awards. Congratulations on that, by the way. Uh, Thanks. I appreciate it. So how did you first learn about the secret ballot system that was being used at the Capitol? And what made you want to look into it more deeply? Well, this actually all started with the devastating Marshall Fire. And I wanted to find out why, after that fire, two very popular bills that aim to improve wildfire investigations and add fire cameras around the state died quietly at the Capitol without any public vote. And when I started making calls at the Capitol, Carrie Donovan, who was a state senator at the time, told me she thought that her wildfire investigation bill died because of this secret ballot system. And what I learned was each spring lawmakers log on to a website anonymously and rank bills. You have a list of the bills that need state funding and each lawmaker, it's my understanding, is given 99 tokens to put on bills. And you can put more than one token on a bill if you feel really important about addressing people experiencing homelessness, for example, you could theoretically put all of your digital tokens on that bill. And in the end, it's a measure of lawmakers' intensity of support for legislation requiring funding. Okay. And I know you've talked to legislative leaders about this. Why do they even do this? They tell me it makes lawmaking more efficient. There's a limited amount of funding each year, right? But you have dozens of bills competing for it. And They say it helps kind of guide the process of determining what bills might be the easiest to pass, right? Because they're also on a limited clock. You know, they they face a deadline. And it's not like they're full time at the state capitol. They do have a limited time window in which to work. Right. It's 120 days each year and, and that's all they get. A lot of your reporting grew out of your open records request. Uh, Can you fill us in a little bit on the process of filing? You know, in my records requests, I I was seeking the results of these surveys. In my mind, you know, these were public documents. You know, if the public wants to see how their lawmakers are ranking bills during the session, that that would be a public record. And there are some challenges, including the first couple of times I did this uh, when they came back and said no. The attorneys for the legislature were claiming that this was protected work product. That led me to reach out to transparency groups to ask them, hey, what what do you think of this? And they very quickly said, we think this is illegal. This is coming from Mm -hmm. the Colorado Freedom of Information Coalition. They said it violates the, quote, letter and spirit of the open meetings law. And... The Colorado Freedom of Information Coalition wrote a letter to the Colorado Democrats saying the system was illegal. How did the party officials change what they were doing? Well, after that letter and some more reporting, the party leaders said, we're going to release the results. Um, But they still used it. They, They used it in March. And they said, again, it was helping them get a pulse on how to spend money in the state budget. Um, But they also, they've said that this isn't a formal vote. They don't think it's breaking the open meetings law because uh, in their words, they're not taking any 
formal action through this. In some cases, it's it's not determining the fate of bills. And there are some examples that I've confirmed where a bill that ranked at the bottom of this list during this secret process went on to pass and got signed by the governor. But I did find, you know, comparing what got passed to the secret survey this year, is that in a lot of cases, it does mirror it. You know, some of these very expensive bills that rank high go on to pass and ones that rank low don't. And a lot of times they die quietly. So it sounds like KUNC did finally get the results from the Colorado Democrats. What was in that information and and what was missing? What we got was the aggregate results of, of how these bills ranked. What it didn't show was how individual lawmakers voted in it. So we couldn't see how lawmaker X from Boulder ranked a wildfire prevention bill or how a lawmaker from Denver ranked one addressing homelessness. And after we got the results, I I checked back in with transparency groups who said they still felt this system was illegal because that piece was missing. This kind of brings us up to the latest moment, um, a lawsuit that's been filed about this. And where is it coming from? Right. Well, the the lawsuit is coming from a conservative group called the Public Trust Institute. And it came about because there was a resident in Douglas County who wanted to see the individual lawmaker scores on these bills. And after not being able to see that, here we have a court case and it will determine very soon whether this secret ballot system is legal under the state's open meetings law. Last week, a Denver judge heard arguments in this lawsuit. How is this going so far? Right, yeah, it was it was really interesting. You had attorneys for the legislature saying that this isn't a formal vote, this isn't a meeting under the law in in Colorado. On the other side, you had attorneys representing this conservative group saying that the public has a right to, to observe how lawmakers are prioritizing legislation. I think the most interesting part was for the first time we heard what the judge is thinking on this. He sounded skeptical of a lot of the arguments to defend this. Uh, he said, twice that there were parts of this system that troubled him. He's going to make a ruling before the end of the year, before the start of the next legislative session. And at the very least, he appears to share some of these transparency concerns that that people have been been raising about this. Well, Scott Franz, thank you so much for your important work reporting on this and bringing it to the public's attention. And thank you for joining me today. Hey, my pleasure, Aaron. Always enjoy talking with you. You'll find links to all of Scott's reporting so far on this topic at our website, KUNC.org, and in the show notes. That's it for us today here on In the NoCo. We'll be back tomorrow with more of what's happening in Northern Colorado. Our interim producer is Mickey Capper. Robin Vincent is our executive producer. I'm Aaron O'Toole. We'll see you next time.